Hi, my name is Dr. Vera Tarman, and I am an addictions physician working out of Toronto, Canada. Have you ever wondered how obesity impacts your health and what you can do about it? This is a question that has been on the minds of many, especially as obesity rates continue to surge worldwide. Obesity is no simple aesthetic concern. It's a complex health issue that can lead to severe conditions such as heart disease, diabetes, and even certain types of cancer. It's a silent yet potent enemy, slowly taking a toll on your health. There are numerous medical treatments available today that can help in managing and even reversing obesity. From dietary adjustments to surgical interventions, from simple medications to complex hormonal treatments, the options are diverse and promising. In the following sections, we'll be exploring these treatments in detail, giving you a comprehensive understanding of each. So let's dive into our first treatment option, the low carb food plan a nutrition strategy crafted to help you lose those stubborn pounds. It's not about abstaining, but about making intelligent decisions. The essence of this plan is straightforward. Bring down your carbohydrate intake and boost your protein consumption. So you're not bidding farewell to your much-loved steaks or eggs, you're simply trading the mashed potatoes for a side of leafy greens. The versatility of this diet is tailored to match your lifestyle, your food predilections, what about the perks? They extend beyond mere weight loss. A low-carb diet can also help manage blood sugar levels, reduce blood pressure, and enhance heart health. Now that we've touched on dietary transformations, let's explore the surgical route further. Did you know there are five different types of bariatric surgery? Each one is unique and offers a different approach to combating obesity. Our discussion begins the adjustable gastric band, often regarded as a common initial procedure. This involves placing a band around the upper part of the stomach to create a small pouch that limits food intake. The band can be adjusted to control the size of the opening to the rest of the stomach. While this procedure is less invasive and the band can be removed if necessary, weight loss tends to be slower and less significant than other methods. Next, we have the gastric bypass, often referred to as the gold standard of weight loss surgery. During this procedure, a small pouch is created at the top of the stomach. This pouch becomes the only part of the stomach that receives food, limiting the amount can comfortably eat. The small intestine is then adjusted to connect to this new pouch, which reduces your body's ability to absorb calories. While gastric bypass can offer significant weight loss, it also comes with potential risks like nutritional deficiencies and surgical complications. The third procedure is sleeve gastrectomy. This surgery involves removing approximately 80% of the stomach leaving a tube or sleeve, which restricts the volume of food intake, but also impacts the hormones that influence hunger, satiety, and blood sugar control. The benefits are substantial weight loss and improved metabolic function, but the risks include potential for leakage and vitamin deficiencies. Then we introduce the Ruan Y gastric bypass, a surgery that also creates a small stomach pouch, but it's smaller than the one created in regular gastric bypass. The surgeon then cuts the small intestine and sews part of it directly onto the pouch. This allows the food to bypass a section of the small intestine. Although it leads to significant weight loss, similar to the traditional gastric bypass, it may also bring potential risks such as malnutrition and bowel obstruction. Finally, there's the biliopancreatic diversion with duodenal switch. This complex procedure involves both restriction and malabsorption. The surgeon removes a large part of the stomach but leaves the valve that releases food to the small intestine and the first part of the small intestine, the duodenum. The middle section of the intestine is closed off and the last part is connected to the duodenum. This surgery is less common due to its higher risk of complications and side effects, but it does result in greater weight loss than other methods. Surgery might seem extreme but sometimes medications can also be part of the solution. Now let's explore weight loss medications and delve into their varying effects. First, we have stimulants. Acting much like a body's accelerator, they boost the central nervous system's activity, effectively reducing appetite and accelerating metabolism. However, it's important bear in mind that they can lead to a higher heart and elevated blood pressure. Next, we have antidepressants. Even though their mechanism in weight loss isn't fully understood, these medications are believed to manipulate the brain chemicals that regulate your appetite. Keep in mind, they're primarily for treating depression and shouldn't be used solely for weight loss. Then we move on to fat blockers, for example, Orlistat. 
These work by obstructing fat absorption in the intestines, allowing some of the consumed fats to be expelled undigested. Side effects may include oily stools and flatulence. Craving blockers are also used for weight loss. Notable among these is naltrexone. These medications work by blocking signals in your brain, assisting you in consuming fewer calories and losing weight. However, side effects such as dizziness, headaches and constipation can be experienced. Then we have GLP-1, such as Ozempic. These types of drugs are known to control blood sugar levels and also make you feel fuller, thereby reducing your appetite. They can be particularly beneficial for individuals with type 2 diabetes who need to lose weight. Their effect doesn't stop at appetite control though. GLP-1 can also slow down the emptying of your stomach, contributing to the feeling of fullness. Furthermore, they are known to regulate insulin production in the body, aiding in managing conditions like diabetes. Through these mechanisms, GLP-1 facilitate weight loss and better metabolic control. These are just a few of the many medications available for battling obesity. Each one has its potential benefits and drawbacks. Remember, medications should be used in conjunction with a healthy diet and regular exercise, and are not a substitute for making changes. There you have it. A broad overview of the medical treatments available for obesity. From the low-carb food plan that helps regulate your body's sugar levels, to the four types of bariatric surgery that can drastically change the shape and function of your digestive system. We've also touched on the wide array of medications, including stimulants, antidepressants, fat and craving blockers, and GLP-1 such as Oxempic. They work best when combined with a healthy lifestyle and regular exercise. Always consult with a healthcare professional before starting any new treatment plan. Stay informed, and remember, your journey to a healthier you is a marathon, not a sprint.